This is Dan Wilkes with PittStateGorillas.com. Today we begin a new weekly podcast called Chalk Talk, in which we visit with defensive coordinator and assistant head coach Dave Weemers and offensive coordinator Steve Rampey from the Pitt State football program. We are joined at this time by defensive coordinator Dave Weemers. The Pitt State defense has registered a pair of credible performances in season opening wins over Northeastern State and Central Oklahoma. To date, the Gorillas have allowed 19.5 points and 361 total yards per game in their first two outings. Coach Weemers, talk about the defense's efforts and production to this point. You know, we've got uh, we've got some good players. Uh, I felt like we've come away since camp started and from spring ball and. Uh, you know, we've we've been out there and, and showed ourselves for different series, different plays, maybe a quarter or two where we look like we're going to be okay. Uh, our issues now are to clean up what we're doing and uh, eliminate errors that we make that are costing us bigger plays, maybe a, a you know a touchdown here or there, or some bigger series. And uh, we, we've we've got more than enough talent to do that, and we're getting closer, I think, to. Uh, starting to play at, uh, at our peak, so we're looking forward to that. In each of the first two games, as you've touched on, the Grillos have shown spurts of, of the dominant defensive unit Pitt State fans saw in 2011, but the squad has yet to put together a complete four-quarter effort. How do you feel the defense is improving as the season continues to move forward? Well, we, we look at things like uh, you know key reading and tackling uh, stances and starts and fundamental things that are eventually going to you know, make you a better team. We're getting better there at our fundamental things. We're going to continue to add defensive schemes, and uh, all of that's got to come together to where, at a point in time here through the season, we're, we're going to improve and put together that that effort that we're all looking for. So, when it comes, you hope it comes sooner than later. But uh, we're we're working on getting it here as quick as possible. You have an experienced squad with veteran starters like. Senior defensive end Gus Toka and junior linebacker Nate Dryling, both All-Americans from 2011, among the six players who started a year ago for the Gorillas. How have those type of veterans helped mesh this unit together early in the season? Yeah, I think they've helped us a lot. We, we, you know, we certainly started this in the spring, and kids like Gus and Joe Uzzle and uh, you know Nate, you know, Nate being the player that he is, and even Joe Winshuffle has carried himself as a, as a veteran type player. Uh, you're going to lean on those guys to to get you over the hump, so to speak. We, we've we've been somewhat average here for a couple weeks. We'll get to where we want to go because of those guys. So uh, they'll continue to lead us and, and make us better. Obviously, the defense has several uh, known commodities coming into the season, but there have been uh, new frontline players as well. KU transfer Keiston Terry, a senior corner Graylin Sanders, who redshirted in the program a year ago freshman nose guard Tay Irvin who came into the program in January. Touch on those players or, or any other pleasant surprises you've seen with your squad. Yeah, and I would throw in, you know, Will Grissom in there too. Will's been here but, you know, hasn't played uh, as amount of plays as he's playing now. And Will's done a great job inside with, with Tay Irvin. Uh, we're going to get better play out of them as we go. They're, they're scratching the surface here, so we're looking forward to them improving and that'll make us better probably than any position. Uh, Keaston Terry's been good up to this point. He's, you can tell he's got a lot of experience, and uh, and, and Grayland's been a good player. And we'll we'll see the best out of him. I I frequently talk about uh, you know the four game transfer rule. Uh, we don't see their best plays until about game four or five. So we'll we'll try to work to get it sooner than that. But uh, we'll see their best here probably in the next few weeks. Pitt State will face Southwest Baptist for the first time since 2007 as the Bearcats have played an independent football schedule since 2008. SBU dropped a 24-14 decision to Truman in Week 1 and a 35-14 decision to MIAA newcomer Lindenwood on the road last week. They have a veteran quarterback in Dan Connors and a go-to wide receiver in Drew Lauderdale. What have you seen on film and what can you expect from the Bearcats this Saturday? You know, they're, they're a scary team. Teams like this are scary because they, they spread you across the field. You see flashes out of them that, you know, you, you think if, you, if they put that together against you, you know, they're going to score on you. So we're, uh, we're certainly uh, you're going to play our best. I think we've got a good game coming. Uh, we need to try and limit not only their possessions but plays, get the number of plays down. And uh, 
see if we can continue to, to, to play well on third down and get off the field and let our offense get rolling. So uh, they're scary. Uh, we'll certainly, uh, they've got our attention, and we'll, 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 uh, we'll see if we can uh, put a full game together. We're visiting with assistant head coach and defensive coordinator Dave Weimers as the number one ranked Gorillas prepare for a week three matchup against Southwest Baptist. Coach Weimers, as we wrap up this first edition of Chalk Talk, what's the most important goals for your defensive unit for Saturday's game with the Bearcats? Well, I think you've, everybody's heard the common uh, answer around here for the last couple of weeks. It's just been consistent play. We show flashes uh, everywhere, offense, defense, special teams, and we're we're looking to just be a more consistent team, and I think that will make us better in the end. Thanks, Coach Weimers. Chalk Talk will continue with Offensive Coordinator Steve Rampey right after this short break. The Holiday Inn Express of Pittsburgh has flexible meeting spaces, complimentary internet access, a free hot breakfast bar in the morning, and an indoor pool that the whole family will enjoy. Come book a room at the newest hotel in Pittsburgh, the Holiday Inn Express. Welcome back to Chalk Talk as, as we're joined by Offensive Coordinator Steve Rampey. The Gorillas have averaged 37.5 points and 530 total yards in their first two games. Looking back over the first two contests, how would you rate the squad's performance in the wins over Northeastern State and Central Oklahoma, Coach? Well, the glaring thing that stands out is turnovers. You know, we had too many turnovers in both games. Uh, it was better in the second game. But their execution in the first game was really, really good. We, we felt like we were balanced. Uh, Tony... I thought managed the game very well, not just from a throwing standpoint, but as far as getting team in and out of the huddle and the running game and and just overall his control of our offense was very, very good in the first game. Uh, second game, not as good, and some of that credit has to be given to Central Oklahoma. They have some things prepared for us, particularly in the run game, that causes some problems. We did not play as physically in the second game as we'd like to. Uh, overall, after two games, we're probably in pretty good shape. We still have some things we have to improve on this week against Southwest Baptist, and we had a good week of practice to get that done. Sophomore quarterback Tony Abanoa has gotten off to a quick start in, in the first two full games under center for the Gorillas. He ranks among the national leaders in passing yards and total offense, and he set a school single-game passing record in his first collegiate start against Northeastern State. Uh, talk a little bit more about how uh, Tony's been able to ease into the starter's role for the Gorillas. Well, you know, that, that whole process started last December, Dan. You know, it wasn't just in August or uh, certainly the first week game. You know, he's worked very hard in the off season, in the weight room, summer conditioning, summer seven-on-seven seven sessions to assume the leadership role of our offense. Uh, having said that, Tony brings a unique set of gifts to that position. He's a very good passer and a, has a very good understanding of our offense and what we want to do, and he understands defenses very well understands blitzes and coverages and fronts and, and, and how we want to attack each one of those things. Uh, so you, you add all that together with the, with the weapons he has, and, and his challenge is to take what the defense gives and not, not to force the game but to let the game come to him. And I thought he did an exceptional job of that in the first week. Second week, he got caught up in a little bit of the excitement of the home crowd and being in Carney Smith for the first time as a starting quarterback and, and probably – let his nerves get to him a little bit and didn't play as well as week one, although he was still 21 for 33, you know, and that percentage of completions is pretty good. Uh, we just weren't as efficient offensively the second week. The passing game has been a positive for the Gorillas. Pitt State currently ranks 11th nationally in passing, averaging 337 yards per game. Last week, junior John Brown and senior Andrew Castaneda both had 100-yard receiving days. Brown had seven catches for 127 yards, and Castaneda had six grabs for 100 yards. It was the first time in 37 games the Gorillas had two 100-yard receivers in the same contest. Another young receiver, redshirt freshman Bradley Argabright, scored his first collegiate touchdown on the opening drive of the game. Talk about the weapons as you have a little bit uh, previously um, that you have at your disposal in the receiving game. Well, the whole thing about our offense is that we are a spread offense, and we are going to take advantage of whatever the defense doesn't defend. And that's the challenge at the quarterback position for us, is that you have to recognize that and put the ball uh, where it's open, You know, put the ball where they're not, so to speak. Having said that, we want to run the football better. And, and, and we think by spreading the field and having multiple weapons on the field that the defense has to account for, it will open up lanes for us to run the ball in and we feel very good about our running back core as well uh, now having said that 
how they defend five, number five, is always an important factor for us as we game plan, as we call plays on, on Saturdays. You know, because they, we're going to play teams that will eventually have very specific game plans set up to try to defend him. And so we have to utilize his skills as they're allowing us to. Uh, his speed is an incredible weapon, and we are going to continue to utilize that, and Tony understands that. But we feel like we have a lot of guys we can get the ball to, and that's his challenge as a quarterback, to spread the ball around and throw it where they're not. Last week against Central Oklahoma, the Gorillas jumped out to a 24-7 to lead on the Broncos. The team actually was driving in the red zone looking to punch in another score right before the half, but the Broncos would intercept an Abanoa pass attempt and to halt the drive. The second half saw the Gorillas struggle with consistency offensively. Looking back, did the team lose a little bit of the wind in its sails right before the half, or how do you assess the second half performance? Well, the thing on the goal line is 100% on my shoulders. I mean, I did, I did a really poor job once. We were kind of in a spread, no huddle uh, offensive set to get down there. And then we got down there with two timeouts left, and I did a really poor job. That's 100% on my shoulders, not Tony's. Uh, and then we got a little conservative. We got a little bland in the third quarter. And part of that was us trying to establish we were going to say we are going to run the ball come hell or high water. And uh, to their credit, you know, they we were in two backs, and when we're in two backs. We kind of have a pretty heavy run tendency, and I think they played us a little tougher in the run. And we didn't we didn't open it up much in the third quarter, and then we got out of that a little bit in the second in the fourth quarter, and you know, put a couple of drives together and got some points on the board. We're visiting with offensive coordinator Steve Rampey on this first edition of Chalk Talk, Coach Rampey. What have been areas of focus this week as the Gorillas prepare for another new opponent in Southwest Baptist? Well. Part of our preparation will never change. You know, we're going to do what we do and be able to take advantage of what they are designed to take away. Uh, but having said that, we've also spent a lot of time this week on the run game. You know, we've got to get better in being physical up front and moving the ball on the ground. It's something Pitt State's always been able to do. We've been able to do the last two years, and we have to continue to strive to do that again. Uh, we've had two really good days of practice so far this week, and we're hoping for another one today. Uh, and we think we will be improved in that area this week. Southwest Baptist is a very physical front. They have a, a, a pretty good defense when you watch them on film, and they are going to present challenges for us in the run game that we have to have our guys rise up and meet. And like I said, we want to be more balanced this week uh, and still be able to get the ball in the end zone. This week, the Gorillas will face a Bearcat defense that in some ways is the closest squad scheme-wise to the Pitt State defense you practice against week in and week out. What have you seen on film? You, you touched a little bit on their line, but what else jumps out to you about SBU? Well, they're a 4-2-5 team, like you said, and, and the first two weeks we played against a team that was predominantly a 4-3 team. 4-3 uh, teams in and of themselves create some unique problems in the run game, where a 4-2-5 team we are kind of familiar with all the way back to last spring and our guys. Uh, so our guys are, have, a, have a pretty good comfort level with what they're going to see. Having said that, now Southwest Baptist has two really fine linebackers that are physical, really good athletes that run to the ball well. They're big. Both of them are big. Their front four is, is pretty physical. Uh, they have two very good corners. And, and their defense has not just had anybody push them around and just have their way with them in the first few games. Uh, so we're going to be challenged offensively. We've got to go out and execute well, be physical up front, and, again, take advantage of what they're trying to give us. All teams look to improve daily in practice and weekly in games. What are, what are the key goals for the Pitt State offense this week against the Bearcats? Well, just to maintain that balance, you know. And, and again, we have to assess first formation-wise, where can we gain advantages by aligning in a certain way. Uh, two, what is their plan for number five? And that's, I don't want to be, you know, everybody knows who John is. We all love him to death. We have to see if they have a special preparation to try to defend him. And we think they'll have to take something away in their defensive scheme to do that. So we have to be able to take advantage of whatever it is they're giving us because of John. Uh, we've got to be more physical. We've got to get our running backs going, and we've got to bang out some five and six yard and, and put together some 11 and 12 play drives like we did in week one and like we're capable of doing and just take care of the football. We're out of time for this first edition of Chalk Talk with Pitt State coordinator Steve Rampey and Dave Weemers. We hope you enjoy this free offering of Chalk Talk on PittStateGorillas.com. This feature will continue through Gorilla Access throughout the season. Sign up for Gorilla Access for all the exclusive insider coverage of Pitt State Athletics. Learn more about Gorilla Access. To learn more about Gorilla Access, go to www.pittstategorillas.com slash showcase.